Hi, I'm Edward O oh for TFB TV, and if this looks like a very regular AR-15 to you, that's kind of the point. This is a little bit special, though. This is a Colt Canada SA-20. So this is the 25th anniversary edition done by uh, Demaco, was the original manufacturer's name, and now they're called Colt Canada, and they make all the rifles for the Canadian Forces. So this is a semi-automatic variant made specifically for civilian shooters in Canada. They made about 500 of these rifles. A few stats on this rifle. As it stands, this is seven pounds, three ounces, and has a six pound trigger pull. This is designed to be as close as possible to the Canadian Forces C7A2. So we've got a full 20 inch heavy barrel here. You've got your A-frame sight, your polymer handguard, polymer stock. This is all assembled here in Canada. Part of the modernized C7s has been an ambidextrous setup. So you've got an ambidextrous safety on here and then an ambidextrous charging handle that I've added after the fact. Everything else on here is pretty much standard, looks very similar to your USGI. There are some key differences though between this and the actual C7, and to talk about that I wanted to get somebody who's better qualified than I am. Um, so I've got Wally here who's a Canadian Forces infantryman, so his work rifle looks very, very similar to this. How long have you been shooting a C7 rifle? Um, I've been shooting a C7 rifle. Uh, when I got in, we were still shooting with the uh, A1, so that's the uh, full black rifle with the fixed butt stock that was exactly one meter long. Um, since then, we've uh, switched over to the C7A2 with the six position collapsible butt stock and green furniture with the ambi controls. So, um, all in all, I've been shooting it for about nine and a half years uh, since I've been in the Army. So how does this differ from your regular work rifle? Okay, so just let's start with the cosmetic differences here. Um, obviously the uh, furniture, the front handguards, uh, the rear butt stock and the pistol grip are black here. They're uh, green, OD green for the uh, C7A2 versions that we use in the Canadian Forces. And it's worth noting that um, that green furniture for the handguard and the buttstock and the pistol grip, that is available. Um, there was a very limited run of it that came out with these rifles, but people were paying 150 to $200 for, for sets of USGI furniture. One of the other things that you'll notice right away, uh, safe repetition, obviously there's no full auto uh, for the civilian version of the SA-20. Um, as you also note over here, um, on the C7A2, we have an ambi magazine release, which you don't have here. It's just on the right-hand side. Uh, some of the other things to note, too, is um, in the butt of the pistol grip on the issued C7A2s, there is actually a compartment for battery storage down here that just pops into the inside of the grip, similar to the one that uh, Magpul has on their pistol grips, except there's no hinged door. It's just a piece of hard plastic that clips into the inside of the... Uh, pistol grip there. Yeah, so another thing to note too is um, I think this is an improvement on the SA-20 over the issued rifles is the uh, butt plate sling mounts here are actually uh, triangular. If you can see there on both sides, left and right. On the C7A2, they're just slits. So if you're using an aftermarket uh, sling that has HK hooks, uh, they're pain in the butt to get on the uh, slit style hook butt plates, but on the triangular ones here, they're actually uh, really good. Right, so on the factory unit, you essentially have to thread the webbing of a, a one inch sling through there. So some of the differences on here are fairly obvious, even to somebody like me, I can see that there's a, a Troy site that's been retrofit on the rail there. What's the factory? The factory uh, rear iron sight's just one that uh, Kadex makes, okay. and it's not a flip up. Well, it, sorry, it's not a flip up, but it does have the, uh, it does have the large and small peep sight that you can flip uh, in between. Right, right. And and this is a nice, like they've got the little Colt Canada marking on there and it's part of their whole collector's edition thing, but it's not what the rifle actually comes with. Yeah, that's correct. So again, uh, this is basically just a Troy rear iron sight that has Colt uh, stamped on, on the front of it. So. As you notice here in the lower, uh, because this is a semi-auto, uh, not a full auto. You can see that the uh, lower receiver is actually, there's no cutout for the full auto sear right here, uh, which is good. Uh, keeps it nice and legal for civilians. Uh, one of the other things to note here that the SA-20 does have, um, along with the C7A2, 
is this little piece of rubber that's wedged in the back here just behind the rear takedown pin. It's called the Accu Wedge. The idea is this, this little piece of soft rubber is wedged in just behind and below the rear takedown pin. And what that does is it creates a bit of tension between the uh, upper receiver and the lower receiver to keep them fairly tight. So what, what happens is over time, especially with our issued rifles, for example, my, my, my issued rifle was made in 1986. So it's been through like tens of thousands of rounds. Um, over time, metal parts kind of get loose. And what the AccuWedge does is it keeps the upper and lower receiver fairly tight so there's no, um, so there's no disturbance and kind of jiggling uh, when you're firing, right? So you also have to keep in mind that the, uh, the barrel and the handguards, these handguards aren't free floating. So anytime you're grabbing it in whatever shooting position you're in, however you're grabbing it, whether you're holding it or in a twisting motion, depending on you're doing it, will affect the outcome of where your round lands. So the Accu Wedge kind of helps reduce that uh, by keeping your upper and lower receiver um, tight. tight. Yeah. This bolt uh, is actually better than the issued one, primarily just in the uh, where the extractor is. So if you take it apart and you look at the extractor spring, there's actually, it's an enhanced extractor spring with the uh, rubber O-ring in it, whereas the issued extractor spring is just the uh, flat metal spring on it. So what it does is it enhances reliability uh, for ejecting rounds when you're shooting. And it's worth noting also that on these, they have done a pseudo semi-auto bolt, right? That we don't have the perfect flush. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. So on a full auto bolt, the uh, the cutaways on the back of the carrier are actually in line, whereas here, the bottom part of the bolt slightly more to the rear. Right. So the other thing that we've got out here, and I've done reviews on this before, is uh, Colt Canada's upgrade from their C7, C8 platform is uh, what they call the IUR, which is their integrated upper receiver. And I did a whole video on that uh, back on my own channel, but also on TFB in January. So the IUR is marketed as an upgrade for the C8, so you maintain a 15.7 inch barrel. Why 15.7 inch barrel? Because Colt Canada doesn't care about the NFA or US laws or US civilian markets. They're exclusively military focused in everything that they do. Um, so they've got a longer barrel in a flat top upper receiver, right? There's no break between the handguard and the upper here. The idea being that if we're mounting any kind of optics that need zeroing further forward on the rifle that they're not going to drift like they would on the, uh, the C7. Um, Wally's IUR is particularly special. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so my IUR, as you know, is the uh, barrel length difference. I have a 10.2 instead of the 15.7. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Otherwise it's the exact the same, same upper, fit. still monolithic upper, still uh, one piece. Talk to me about the C9 flash hider. So the C9 flash hider, this is the exact same flash hider that's used on the uh, C9A2 uh, light machine gun that we use. Um, it's a very good, robust uh, flash hider. It really helps uh, reduce recoil, especially when you're going full auto. Uh, so the advantage of it, having it on uh, a semi-auto is pretty obvious. There is a uh, almost no muzzle jump when you're firing the IUR, primarily because it's a it's a monolithic upper that's all forged metal in one piece. It's fairly heavy, but not too heavy, but even shooting on a short barrel like this uh, is not an issue. Follow-up shots are fantastic. The C7A2, you get ambidextrous charging handle, ambidextrous safety, ambidextrous magazine release, but the bolt release is always factory on them? Uh, yeah, that's correct. So the bolt release on the IUR. Uh, it's just your standard uh, AR-15 bolt release, nothing special to it. A lot of guys will do the aftermarket uh, battery assist uh, device levers, uh, like this one here, and the one I got on here is a uh, Troy, so. And and so if you're out on exercise or whatever, then they're okay with that, doing that kind of upgrade on your issued rifle? Uh, Danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll reserve my comment on that. There you go. Good answer. Good answer. So for uh, left-handed shooters, um, through basic, everyone's just taught to shoot right-handed. That's how uh, drills are taught in the PAM. Uh, once you're past your basic, um, and if you're going into a combat arms trade where you're utilizing your rifle as your uh, as everyday pieces of kit, then uh, 
people will transition to shoot left left hand uh, for lefties. Um, what do you treat as your effective range on your work rifle? Okay, so on the C7A2, uh, maximum effective range for individual fires is 300 meters. For section or group fire, uh, sustained is 600 meters. And that's with the uh, C7 a2 site, which has a 3.4 times magnification on it. Yeah, and those L cans are available in Canada too as surplus, but they're extremely expensive. I think they're $1,400 for something that's kind of like a Trigicon, but not a Trigicon. And now the Americans actually use a version of the C79 on the M249 saw, right? That that optic on the saw gunner's optic, isn't that an L can? Uh, that's correct. So on the for American M249 uh, saw gunners, they also use an Alcan scope on it. I don't think it's the C79. From what I've seen, it looks like it's uh, the same body and chassis as the C79, but with a different sort of crosshair in it. It's a specific machine gun crosshair in there, but I'm pretty sure it's the same magnification in glass. That's it for this week. I want to thank Wally for taking the time to appear on the show. ProxyBid and Venture Ammunitions for their sponsorship. A big thank you to Zahal.org for loaning the rifle that you saw in this episode. And as always, thanks to you for watching. I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody all stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam.